Hey y'all, it's Taylor from Tattoo Teacher Plans. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you are new here and just popping in, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Today, I'm doing the first video of my 2023 goal series. I'm really excited for this. I always love doing this. I've been doing it since, I think, 2019. I'll link previous goal videos down below if you want to check them out. But I'm really excited to kick off this new series because it's one of my favorites. I love goal setting. I love this time of the year. Even though January is like just another month, for me, it's just a point where I stop and I start again. And so there are going to be three videos in this goal series. I'm going to put a little graphic over here so you can check out the different videos. They go up every Monday for three Mondays in December. The first one is this one right here, and we're going to be going over my 2022 reflections. We're going to be looking at my compass assessment for this new year, and then going through some intentions and I'll share my word of the year with you. The next one is my annual goals and that one is like the meat and potatoes of this whole thing. I'll share with you every category and all the breakdowns for each one. And then in the third video, we're gonna go ahead and break down my word of the year and we're gonna look at each category and how I'm gonna relate that word to those categories. And I'm gonna do it a little bit differently this year. I'm gonna like get a little bit more focused. I think in the years past, I've just kind of like, copied my annual goals into it and it just seemed redundant. So this year I'm really going to get focused on that and share in each category how it's connected to the word. So I'm excited for all of this. I'm so glad you're here. If you are doing your goals alongside with me, let me know down in the comments. I always love to hear that. That's just always so cool. I do want to make it clear right here at the top that this is not a how-to. You can definitely steal ideas from me and I would love for you to, but I'm not an expert. I just do my goals how I feel and it comes from my heart and that's all I can do. And that does not make me like in charge of anything, no more than anyone else. I'm just a person sharing the goals. Now I use the Moxie Life system and I love it. I've been using it since 2019. I'm just like ingrained in it now and I, I just, I love it. The people behind it are so great. The whole mindset of the whole company and I'm an affiliate for them and I... I'm not an affiliate for everybody. I really love this company a lot and I think it is done a lot for the planner community. So if you want to check out the Moxie Life website, I will leave that down below. But also if you just want to like dip your toe in, maybe practice a few things, you can check out the printables. So that's what I did for like all of my drafts, which I'll show you in a minute, but I will leave that link down below as well. So you can check out the printables and see, just like practice with the system before you buy, or if you're on a budget, definitely go down there, use the printables because it's a great option. It's what I did in 20, I think 2019, 18 is when I got started and I totally used the printables for a long time. So those are definitely a great option. So there's a few things on my desk here that I want to just intro to you and you can become familiar with them. This first one is a new product. It is the 2022 year end reflections. This is available in the shop and I think that it's comes like free with purchase until the end of the year. So if you want to check this one out, it is awesome. I'll show you the insides in just a bit. I've also got my Moxie Life markers and these are so cool. They have them labeled with the um, category. I love that. I'm also going to be using this pen. This is the Jelly Roll Moonlight in, it's either green gray or gray green. I can't remember, but this pen is awesome and it matches the gray like text throughout all of the Moxie Life products. So I actually have two of those because I have a backup. And then I've got my trusty Tombow correction tape. But this stuff is great and it's my like go-to. So I will need this because I'm gonna make some mistakes. And then this is the intro notebook, like the yearly notebook that goes with the companion notebooks, which I have the whole set and I'll do my monthly goals in January, but this is the one that we're going to be working through for this whole series. It has everything you need to set your goals. And, and then this comes with a set of four notebooks. And these notebooks have all of these stuff for your monthly goals and weekly actions. So I always use this notebook with my monthly goals, which I do at the beginning of each month. And then I'll do weekly actions videos here and there. But I always post on Instagram if you want to see those. But really, this one is the star of the show for these videos. It has so much goodness in it. So let me move all of this stuff out of the way and then we will just like get into it. I'm so excited. I will have timestamps down below if you want to look at a specific part of this process. But for this one, there's going to be three things that we do. First, reflections. Then 
I'm going to do my compass assessment, then we'll get to my intentions. We're going to start with my year-end reflection. So this is a new booklet um, that came out this year, and this was so helpful. I was a little intimidated at first because it's a lot. You have to like really open your heart to it. But once I dug in, it really like has been a game changer. It really got me thinking about um, this whole year and like mistakes I've made, um, good things that I've done, like major steps, but it really put into focus what I need to work on for the next year. So let's just go right on into this. Here is the beginning. And then, so first you start with a compass assessment. I did this one like at the probably mid November and I just wanted to see where I was at and I identified fun and recreation and health and wellness as two categories that I could definitely work on but this was just like a starting point for me and then I got into the real like the work okay this was something that I worked on for several weeks I would jot down things on each page close it come back to it in a few days maybe even a week and it really like helped my mind stay fresh on what I was thinking about and I could definitely like add more things to this like the first time I did it I probably wrote down like one or two things for each um question or prompt but then like I filled it up by the time that I finished because it really like helped to come back to it so if you're struggling with it definitely just take a break come back to it Okay, so first thing is wins. So I'm not going to read all of these to you. I'll just highlight a couple of things. So some wins this year. I got my passport again. I let it expire years ago. So that whole process was something I worked on in the summer. I lost 20 pounds slow and the right way. I'm really proud of that. Um, I created this tech team at work with one person from each campus. It was great. Um, I finally tried a tasting dinner and that was just so, so fun. And I revived the planner club at my school and my nephews know who I am. They moved to my town and we just have a good relationship now. And I love spending time with them and we just pick up where we left off every time we see each other, which I love. So highlights this year. Um, I bought my ticket for Go Wild, my first one. Excited for that. I totally redid my whole bedroom over the summer, and that was just like such a big project, but worth it. I also um, went to a couple of musicals, and I love musicals, and I haven't done that in years. So I'm really glad that I picked up that again. And we had our annual family weekend, which was great. We always have one in October. It's always fun challenges. So I got a really bad infection in August, like really bad. I was going to the doctor almost every day for two weeks. Thankfully, I was able to get over it and not have to like go to the hospital or anything, but it was just like took me down for weeks and it was really hard to get over that, but it kind of like made me face some things about my anxiety and I actually like sought some help for that because I was like seeing the doctor so much. We got really comfortable with each other and um, that was really like a good thing that came out of that, which was great. Um, I also had surgery in January and I recovered fully from that. I had a really bad sleep, but at the end of the year, like I really like took care of a lot of that. Um, lots of plateaus with the weight and like even some like backtracking. So it's something I want to work on um, next year. And then lessons I learned. I'm stronger than I think and feel. Definitely. I need to take care of myself. Um, I want experiences, not things. So growth this year. I'm stronger and more confident. I can ask for help. I'm more centered. I'm peaceful. Definitely more grateful. And I tried mindfulness and I definitely want to build on that in 2023. Gratitude, of course, my family, my friends, my job, my coworkers, my home, um, having family closer. I love the canyon. It's like my special place, my like spiritual place and definitely like my hobbies and creativity. So what is working in my life right now that I want to kind of carry over? Definitely family relationships and friendships. My routines, I've like really fine tuned those and those are great. I love my job, seasonal living, What's not working. Definitely like no commitment to my workouts. I don't know what my deal is, but definitely like the second half of the year. It has just become like stagnant and maybe even like going backwards. Um, my spirituality is like, there's a lot of like questions around that. And um, I haven't been incorporating yoga or qigong like I really used to do. 
and I want to do that more. Um, overeating and being conscious of it at the same time and wasting money. So my impact, how do I want people to experience me? I want people to find me as caring and kind, thoughtful, supportive, generous, a good like aunt, sister, daughter, smart and curious adjustments I want to make in 2023, dedication to my health goals, exploring my beliefs and values, um, continue, continuing to take care of my health, definitely more anti stuff. I'm I just want to be like the best aunt I can be. Um, and mindfulness practice. I need to visit my grandparents more and I want to work on my relationships with my middle sister. She has intellectual disabilities and I want us to be closer. Um, reflections. Okay. So this is like very reminiscent of the monthly reflections in the companion notebooks. So a couple of words to describe this year. Inconsistent, forward, distracted. Three words to describe how I felt. Discouraged, apathetic, hopeful. Like it seems like all of those things would be contradictory, but different times, you know. Three words to describe how I want to feel in the next year. Contented, strong, dedicated. What I'm most excited about. Definitely go wild. Other travel. Um, tackling my health goals. I'm like feeling a little momentum in my head at least. And I love the fresh start. Areas of life that will be my focus. Definitely these first two, but also personal growth. What am I going to say no to? Spending too much money, giving up on myself, and waiting for others to do things that I enjoy. What am I going to say yes to? Fun and spontaneity, standing up for myself, help and advice, more anti-time, and choosing joy. I think that's like choosing joy. Sometimes you just have to choose it. Also, what am I going to stop apologizing for? And I put everything here at one point, and then I put rest and helping my or putting myself and my health first. Who is going to be my support network? Definitely my parents, um, my sister Callie, and my friends. The next few pages were like a place to write a letter to yourself, and I'm going to keep that to myself just because it's like a little intense. <laughs> um, I wrote it when I was like feeling a little, uh, you know, my emotions were like at the surface. So, so let me show you like my process here. Okay, so so I really had like three drafts here and this is like hours of different work so I would like come back to it put it away come back to it when I had like a fresh mind um if I felt myself getting like weighed down I would put it away just to um you know keep my mind focused so this was the first draft of my intentions I also have in here like compasses and annual goals like brainstorming on that I'll show you that in the next video the second one I took the assessment score again and I worked on my annual goals some more and then I came up with my final draft for my intentions. Now, this is still kind of messy, but um, this gave me a lot of direction and um, like where I want to go with it. So I might add some more words or like delete some, but we'll see. And then I've got my annual goals and my mind map ready to go. Um, of course, I'm still going to change things. But for now, I feel like I'm in a really good spot. But I just want to make it clear that like this was ours and hours of work, like not at once. I would sit down and work on it for like 15 to 20 minutes here, five minutes there, 10 minutes there. So like it was not sustained work. I get really bogged down when I do that and it's not helpful for me. So use the printables if you want to create drafts or to make it so that your final um, version is not so messy. It's just my personal preference that it's nice and clean and neat. That's up to you. All right, it is time to move on to my compass assessment in my notebook. So let's go through this notebook real quick just so you can see what's going on in here. So there's a little intro page, and then these pages give you a lot of info on like the parts of the Moxie Life process, and then a lot of info on the life compass. Here is the scoring, the intentions page, and then you go into your actual goal work. Gives you info on different types of goals. And then you, I love this page so much. I actually like pull it out. It's like perforated. So this is the things to consider page. You can use this for a mind map or like anything you want to do with it. And then here are your annual goal pages. I love the redesign on these pages. The doc grid is just really helpful for me. It kind of gives me just a little more space and room to like do my thing. So there's four pages of that. And then you have a page for a vision board, which I usually turn this into my big mind map about my word of the year. 
And then there's some goal setting tips here. And that is it. So we're going to go back to the beginning of this and work on my compass assessment. So I have done it a few times, but I'm going to do it again to see where I'm at. So we're going to start here. I'm going to grab my pen. Okay, and then I'm going to speed you through this because it's a little tedious, but you can see in the final product as we go. Okay, so I have finished my scoring. Now we're gonna go to this side and I'm gonna fill in my compass. I'm also gonna identify like where I want to be with this next year. So I'm gonna outline a line above. So well, let's just do this together so you can kind of see what I mean. I did round up or down depending on what the decimal point was. So this was actually my lowest, fun and recreation. And then physical environment was my highest. So I am going to utilize the Moxie Life markers. I just keep them in my little mug from Moxie Life. So let's start with personal. So I had a seven on personal. Okay, then um, for where I want to be, I'm going to put an eight. I'm going to go to fun and recreation. So that one was a five. And I'd kind of like to be at a like seven, I think is manageable. Okay, work and learning is next. So I was at an eight right now and I'd like to be at a nine. I feel like this looks a little bit messy, but <laughs> we're just gonna go with it. Okay, next is family and relationships. So I am at a six here and I want to be at an eight. Then we're gonna go to health and wellness. So that one is a five. I would like to be at a seven. I think I want to say eight, but seven is more realistic. Okay, then spiritual and personal growth. I'm at a six. I would like to be at an eight. I feel like I have a lot of potential to grow in this area. Okay, financial. So I'm at a seven. I would like to be in an eight. And finally, I've got physical environment. So that one is an eight. Let's just go with nine. All right, there we are. My compass is finished. I have gotten comments in the past about my scores being too high for myself, and I would agree, but I don't know what else to say because when I score myself here, I'm pretty like realistic with myself. I'm uh, honest, I would say. So I don't know, maybe I have a different viewpoint on like some of these things than other people, and that's okay. It's all right. So let's go to my intentions. This is one of my favorite parts of this process. It's just, it's like you really feel like you're in it and you're really preparing for the next year. Okay, before we get started, I'm going to kind of do what I did last year and give a little bit of color to this just to get it going. So we're going to do that real quick. Okay, that looks cute. I'm loving the Moxie markers because they match so well. So let's get into this. Um, I'm going to voice over while I'm writing so that I save myself and you some time and you kind of hear what I'm talking about like when I am writing. So the first prompt here is what can I use more of in my life this year? One of them, the number one one, is joy. Um, the last couple of years has just been kind of a bummer for lots of reasons. So this year I want to embrace joy. Same thing with joy, fun. I just want to embrace fun and like just having fun, seeking fun. Also downtime. I think I like to like go, go, go all the time. And I think sometimes I need to like back off and chill. <laughs> Boundaries are also something I need in my life with people and with like things in my job. Also strength and vitality is something that I want to really focus on this year. And then just focus on progress and find out my purpose. 
The second prompt is, what could I use less of in my life this year? I think the first one is stress. I'm pretty sure everyone would say that one. I'm going to add to that worry. Also, overindulgence of like a lot of things, buying things, eating too much, just overdoing it with certain things. Also, apathy and judgment um, and wasting money kind of goes with overindulgence. But those are definitely things that I want to just let go of, push out and keep that these things like joy and fun and downtime those in my life more the third prompt is what characteristics would I like to nurture this year so a couple peace consistency especially fun contentment also like learning and connections with other people those things I really just just kind of let go to the wayside in a lot of ways and I want to bring that back in and do that more Next one is three habits I want to develop this year. So I went round and round with myself about these three and what I ended up coming up with movement, mindfulness, and my cleaning routine, which I've had a really good start on, but I'm just not super consistent with it just yet. This one is this year I will be more strong in my mind and body, connected to other people, myself, purposeful. I think I do a lot of things without a real purpose. I also want to be more open and curious about lots of different things, different cultures. Um, myself, my own learning, I will do less worrying, procrastinating. That's been a big one in like the second half of 2022. I will do less comparing. I'll also do less looking away. I got to like face things head on sometimes and I have been kind of just avoiding certain things so I definitely want to work on those I will give myself grace for my mistakes and missteps that's just part of life and that's part of learning also choosing rest like some days you got to choose the rest so that you can come back the next day and do more and not knowing all the answers this has to do with like my spiritual and personal growth at work at like in conversations with people like I don't know everything and I sometimes I just need to shut my mouth and open my ears and listen and learn to do better you know I will let go of limits arbitrary milestones comparisons outside validations and guilt I'm gonna add shame on here too I will embrace experiences, community, and reflection. That's something that I was missing a lot in this past year, and it's something I let go of about March, and reflection is really important to me, but I have not made the time or space for it, so I definitely want to embrace that as a valuable process and not put it off or push it away. I'm going to add fun and joy also to my embrace section. So I thought long and long and hard. So I made myself a list of like four different words that were kind of speaking to me. So they were purpose, consistency, mindful, and progress. And the one that really stuck out to me was consistency. The reason why is that I have the foundation to do all of these things and to do them well. But if I don't have consistency, then I'm not going to get anywhere which is what it felt like in 2022. Like I had all the building blocks, but I just couldn't put them together or keep them together for long periods of time. And so I think with having consistency as my word of the year that I will, I'll focus on that more, not on like big milestones, but on like small steps every day. So synonyms for consistency include steadiness, stability, constancy, and equilibrium. And I'm going to add those words in here because they really just kind of bring in some more like shades of consistency and different elements of it. And I like that. So I'm going to write consistency in here. And then below it, I think I'm going to write those synonyms. Okay, I want to use this, which color? Purple. And I'm just going to outline consistency real quick. And then what this word means to me, I have all the elements to make changes. The key for me is consistency. So these are all of my intentions for this new year. 
it just feels really good to have this done because going through this really like puts me in the right mindset to go into my goals next week. So today we looked at my 2022 reflections. We did my compass assessment once again after multiple drafts. And then I set my intentions for this new year. Next week, we are going to be going through my annual goals. So we're going to go over here a few pages. And we're going to write in my annual goals. This is the exciting part because it becomes real. And then the next week, we're going to break down my word of the year, which is consistency. And think about each category and how consistency is going to get me where I want to go. I hope that you enjoyed this goals video. It's always fun for me to share my process. I'd love to hear your feedback, see where you're at with your goals. Are you excited about 2023? Where are you at in your goals process? Are you doing them along with me? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when I upload. And I will see you next Monday. Bye!